Hello everyone, welcome to my 2018 holiday gift guide for the Practical Maker. I decided to do one of these gift guides just because there's a lot of little items that I have in my shop that I really enjoy using, and I figured it'd be good to kind of throw them together into a little holiday gift guide. I'm calling this the gift guide for the Practical Maker because there's nothing really glitzy about any of these stuff. It's just kind of good quality tools that make good stocking stuffers, and these are mostly products that I've used for the past you know year or two, and I feel really comfortable recommending them. So this is just kind of a little selection of some of the favorite things I have out in my shop. So let's get started. A couple quick notes about this list. Down below in the description, I will have timestamps for everything. So if you don't want to hear me rattle on about my favorite tool, you can just go down below, look at the description, look at the list, and you can find everything down there. In addition, I do have links for everything below. Uh, I think pretty much every single one of these things is going to be on Amazon. Most all of them are going to be prime, except for like one or two little exceptions. So be mindful of that. In addition, the Amazon links are affiliate links. Affiliate links are a way for YouTubers like myself to get a little bit of a kickback. If you click on the link and end up buying the product, we get a little bit of a commission for recommending that. If you are uncomfortable with this concept, you can leave this video. Um, you do not have to use these links either. You can just go into Amazon, type out the product directly, and you can just go buy it without the affiliate link, and I will get nothing if that is your prerogative. So you have that choice. This is merely just a list of products and suggestions on things I like. So that being said, I've ordered this list from the least expensive up to the most expensive. So let's start with the first item on the list. The very first item I have up on my list is this pair of Hakko CHP 170 micro cutters or flush cutters. These can be had on Amazon for under $5. I think they're like $4.50 right now. So it's a relatively inexpensive pair of pliers, as you will see from some of the tools coming up later but they're really nice. They fit in your hand great. They have a nice angled cutter on the bottom, and I use these for pretty much any of my wire cutting, and I also have another pair over at my 3D printer for just cutting off filament and little things like that. They're just very handy to have around, and at the price for $5, they make a great little kind of stocking stuffer, and I've had three pairs of these for the last five or so years. They're just really fantastic, inexpensive pliers. The next item I have up on my list is going to be a little bit more specific. Everything else here is pretty general for the hobbyist, but this is more specific. This is the Riobots Combat Robot Tutorial Book. This is written by the team behind Minotaur, uh, Toro, Toro Maximus, Toro Classic, Toro 30, um, all of those robots. This is the Bible for robot combat robot building. If you want to know anything about building combat robots, it's going to be in this book. And this is largely my inspiration for a lot of my videos and a lot of my tutorials. You should really get this book. It's $10. It helps support the community and is just a fantastic for resource for anyone looking to build combat robots. If you're not at all interested in combat robots, don't get this book. There's nothing relevant in there. It is very, very specific to building combat robots. But 10 bucks, it's an absolute bargain, and you should buy it if you're looking into building robots. As I said in the intro, I call this video the holiday gift guide for the practical maker. And here is a very practical item, shop towels. If you're still using paper towels, you should really look at using shop towels instead. They're much more durable and they're just more suited for use out in the workshop. Uh, I do a lot of things with uh, bearings and you get grease on your hands, uh, getting coolant on your hands from you know machining something, things like that. They're just a lot more robust than a standard paper towel. And this is definitely one of those items that's consumable. You can go through them very quickly, especially if you're using like epoxy and stains and things like that and I tend to not buy these for myself. The only reason I always have a solid supply of these, which you'll see over there, is a couple years ago, my mother-in-law bought me a huge pack of these and she got them from Amazon. And if you look at the link down below, you can get these in these mega packs so you will never be without shop towels. So I highly recommend getting shop towels for your loved maker um, because they're just a fantastic thing to have on hand. It's kind of like the socks and the underwear of the maker world. It's not interesting or all that fun, but it is really nice to have them on hand. 
If you don't have a good quality set of tweezers in your workshop, you should look into getting some. I don't specifically have this exact kit, but I do use something extremely similar to this at work, and I have um, you know various tweezers here in my workshop. A good set of tweezers will have straight ones, you're gonna have flat ones, you're gonna have these um, nice curved ones. It's nice to have a lot of different types. If you do anything with uh, surface mount components, surface mount soldering, tweezers are extremely useful in that. I use these for my 3D printer for pulling filament off the nozzle. They're just a really versatile thing to have around in the shop and in my little, um, you know, I have a pencil holder thing over there. I always have one or two pairs of tweezers sitting in that. So a nice set of tweezers can be had for under $15. Check the link below, but it's definitely something that you wanna have in your workshop if you don't already. The next item on my list can be had for under $15 as well. There's some different options, but it is this wire splicing kit. This is something that I just came across relatively recently. I think I saw like an ad on Facebook or something for it, but it's these little uh, butt connectors that are also heat shrink that have this little line of solder in the middle. So you put one wire in one side, one wire in the other side, you kind of twist them together a little bit and you just use a heat gun and the heat shrink shrinks around the two wires and then the solder in the middle actually melts and then reflows into the wire and you get a nice soldered connection. So if you're just joining two wires together, these kind of make that process a little bit easier. And you can get something like this little kit that has you know, 25 of one, two, three, four, four, five different sizes for different gauge wires. You can get something like this for under $15. So it's a great little stocking stuffer type of thing. I always like consumables because you know you tend to go through them and you always need to be replenished. So this is just a nice thing to have on hand if you do a lot of wire splicing. I don't know about you, but whenever I use my drill press, I grab like four or five drill bits and I drill with one of them, set it down on my workbench, grab the other one, and then I spend the next hour trying to find all those drill bits and put them back. So any product that helps me stay a little bit more organized is very welcome. This little drill press tray does exactly that. I can keep some of my most used bits like this um, center drill, um, a Forstner bit, I was using that for something pretty recently, and then um, these little um, counter sinking bits. I just kind of keep them on this little tray constantly. I also have some three in one and some cutting fluid and the whole thing just kind of slides back out of the way or slides in front if you need it. It attaches to the drill press with a little pipe clamp so it can fit pretty much any drill press from a large column like this Nova all the way down to a smaller little bench top drill press. So it just kind of keeps me from putting all my tools on my workbench instead. And this thing retails for around $15, but there is a shipping fee on top of it. So you can generally get these for about 20 bucks. So it's a relatively inexpensive way to add this extra little bit of surface to your drill press where you can store things. The next item up on my list is more of a safety item than it is anything else. It is an infrared thermometer. And the reason I say it's a safety item is if you're in the workshop and you need to measure a temperature, generally speaking, it's probably something that's going to hurt you. Think of a heat sink that you're like, man, that is drawing a lot of power. I wonder how hot that is. Oop, there goes my finger. An infrared thermometer is a really great way to check the temperature of something without having to touch it. Uh, think about machining something on your lovely Tormox CNC machine and the cutter gets really hot or the workpiece gets really hot and you don't know why it's not cutting the way it should. Use the thermometer versus touching the thing. I learned this a long time ago. I'm very hands-on when I make something. I always like to touch things. I always make sure I have one of these around. I have three of these just to make sure that there's always one handy so I don't go touching it to see if it's hot. These are also very useful for 3D printing, for checking bed temperature, for checking nozzle temperatures, things like that. They're inexpensive enough. I think, you know, $15, $20, somewhere around there. Prices fluctuate, but it is good enough to have one of these inside your house and also one of these outside in your workshop. Very handy to have. I will freely and openly admit that I'm a bit of a tool snob. So when it comes to basic hand tools, I typically like high quality tools, but at the same time, not these tools that are just really absurdly expensive for the sake of being expensive. 
My next two products that I have are a nice set of extra long ball and Allen keys. These are um, Bandhus, Bandhus, I don't know how to say it, um, but they are a German brand, but these are actually made in the USA. Um, I think this is the same overarching parent company that also distributes Philo as well. You'll typically see Philo and Bandhus um, directly together. The thing I like about these is the ball end. If you don't have any ball end Allen keys, they are very nice to have. You can go in pretty much at any angle and still turn the thing. They are also very nice for a damaged head. If you have an Allen head that's somewhat damaged, you can kind of use the ball end and kind of get it in there. I love using these for combat robots because the Allen heads always kind of get a little screwed up. The other nice thing about this set is it has pretty much every size that you're going to want, and they are extra long. Um, for some odd reason, the standard size isn't as long as the metric. The metrics are really, really long. And the other nice thing about these is they have a um, engraving on them that has the size. So if you're not sure what size you have in your hand, even down to the um, little tiny uh, two millimeter one, you can just barely make it out, but it has a little engraving that's two millimeter on there. These are very nicely made. I love the um, nickel plating on them. Um, it's not all grimy like the black oxide is. And I've been using these for several years now and they all look brand new. They are very, very nice. So I have the um, SAE set. I think it runs around $16 for the set of those. And then for the metric, um, I think it's around $22. So they're not the cheapest thing out there, but if you're just buying one set at a time as like a little stocking stuffer thing, they are a nice thing to have because these will last forever and it will be the nicest set of Allen keys that you own. Having a nice set of precision screwdrivers is a must have if you're taking apart a lot of smaller things. If you don't have the right screwdriver, you're just gonna strip the head off and it's gonna be really frustrating. This set of Philo Precision Screwdrivers is only about 20 bucks, which is pretty good for a nice set of precision screwdrivers. And it has, let's see, four flat heads and two Phillips. It has a zero and a double zero size Phillips. They have the little spinny knob on the top, so you can do that kind of thing. And they have um, this black coating on the outside, which um, my other screwdrivers have. And it's a really durable coating, and you get a nice bite into the screw head. So I highly recommend this. I looked all around for a precision set of screwdrivers when I first got these. I had a really inexpensive set, and the tips were just really soft, and I would end up you know, stripping screws out more often than not. And I ended up getting this set, and I absolutely love this set. For the price, I think it's um, probably one of the best values out there for a nice set of quality precision screwdrivers. The good old classic X-Acto knife. I have three of these in my shop, I think at this moment, and I use these for pretty much everything. I have a really old nasty one uh, that I use for plastic. I use my blowtorch to heat this up and I can actually cut through 3D prints with it. So if I'm making, you know, kind of a little modification to things I've 3D printed, I use this one and the blade is really nasty and black. I also use this one for when I epoxy motors, um, cutting off the epoxy when it's just barely dried. So I have one kind of nasty one and then I have two others that are a little bit nicer that I use for cutting cardboard templates, cutting, um, you know, like uh, paper templates and just various things like that. I really like having an X-Acto knife handy at all times. So what I've done is I've linked to this little kit that I found on Amazon that is really nice and I kind of want one actually, that has three different X-Acto handles, several different types of blades and a nice little wooden case for it. So for 22 bucks, um, somewhere about that, you know, prices fluctuate, that this is a really nice kit because a lot of people don't pay a lot of attention into having an X-Acto knife. You just kind of go out and buy one and you might not buy all the different blades or the little cushioned handle. So it's a nice little kit to have. If you do any kind of electrical prototyping, it's really annoying to hook a bunch of wires together just for a functional test. And I do this a lot with combat robots. I just want to kind of wire things up really quickly and see if it works. So that means I don't really want to strip all the wires down 
heat shrink them together, solder them together, things like that, I want a quicker way. So you've probably seen in my video these little Wago lever nuts. These are fantastic little prototyping tools. It is a simple little block. They come in like a five pin, a three pin, and a two pin, and all the connections are just bust together. You just pull up one of these levers, fit in your wire, snap the lever down, and that is connected. The cool thing about these is they can handle a ton of voltage, a ton of current, and they can accept anything up from like a 20 gauge wire, which is what this little guy is, up to this big fatty 12 gauge. So I'll just put this 12 gauge in there. It takes a little bit of force to get in there. Boom, and that's in there. So I've got a 22 gauge connected to a 12 gauge, and I have three other slots. So if you're bussing a lot of wires together, this is really a quick and simple way of doing it. And the other thing I like is when you're done with the project, you just lift up the levers, pull the wires out, and then just put these back into your toolbox. And I've linked below to an Amazon link where they have kind of a little assortment of the five pin, the three pin, and the two pin. It's nice to kind of have all three of them. And one of my YouTube followers actually told me that they have a new version of it. So I also have another link that is the version two of this, which I think the form factor is just a little bit smaller. But I bought a big set of these maybe two, three years ago, and I'm still going through them because when I'm done with a prototype, I just take them off and put them back in my little organizing bin. So they really do last a long time, and I've even used these in combat robots. So they're pretty durable and can handle the current. With this next item, I really debated putting it on this list, but I figured why not? This little USB microscope. If you follow my channel, you know that I did kind of a review-ish of this um, eh, maybe a few months ago, and I really like this thing. It's 35 bucks, it comes with the base, it has an adjustable focus, adjustable light, and it's just a great way to get a closer look at something. You could use just an old school magnifying glass, but this is just a little bit more convenient, and for me, when I do videos, I can just hit the button on top and take a little screenshot. So if you have a need for getting a closer look at something, this is just a great little thing to have out in the shop. And it's really fun just to play around with. When you get one of these, you will go all around your house looking for every little item, you know, dead bugs and things like that, just getting a closer look at it. Microscopes are fun. So it's just a really nice thing to have. And for 35 bucks, I think this would make a neat little gift. So this next item is probably my favorite item on this entire list, and it might not be all that obvious. It is this little flashlight. This is a Nebo Redline flashlight, and I know there's a lot of flashlight snobs out there. I'm not a huge flashlight snob, but I do like nicely made tools, and I love this little thing. I like having a dedicated workshop flashlight. I have a couple other little flashlights throughout the house and you know, they're of varying levels of quality, um, but this thing is a really great flashlight to have out in the shop. It is relatively small. It has an adjustable focus here on the end of it. And then it has all the various modes that of course you would have. It's also plenty bright. But the thing that I really like about it that makes it perfect for the workshop is it has this little magnetic base to it. The base has a USB charger off to the side, so it's just a um, standard micro USB that you can plug this into. It does come with the charger, but you plug this directly into the wall. You've probably seen it back here. It always sits right here um, next to my other chargers and whatnot. And so when you're done with it, you just stick it to the little magnetic base and it charges, and then you pick it up and it's ready to go. A charged flashlight is a good flashlight. A dead flashlight that needs batteries is not something you need in the moment. It is a worthless flashlight. So having something that is always ready to go, always turns on, you can see that it has the adjustable focus. So you have a fine point and then you adjust it for nice wide. I use this thing constantly. Um, using it on a 3D printer to see how the layers are going, using it for um, detail inside the mill. Even though I have all the lights inside the mill, more light is always better. So I love this little thing and a little magnetic base means that it's always charged and always ready to go. When I first started filming this video, of course, I set everything up here on the desk so that, you know, when the video fades in, you can kind of see what's up here and kind of get a general idea of what I'm going to be talking about. And if anyone doesn't already know what it is, you're probably wondering the whole time what this is. This is the Bug Assault. This is $45 on Amazon. 
and it is really cool. It probably doesn't belong on this list. It isn't really a workshop thing, but I really like it and I just wanted to include it in this video. This is a pneumatic salt shotgun and is made for killing bugs. So if you have flies around your house or things like that that are bugging you, uh -huh, you can use this. You fill it in this little reservoir right there. You fill it with just standard table salt. You cock it, hit the trigger, and it shoots salt. It basically just shoots this spray of salt out and it can kill a bug from like 10 feet away. It is a really fun way of killing bugs. Fly swatters are so old school. Get yourself a bug assault. It is really fun to just run around the house and shooting bugs. And because it just shoots table salt, you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, getting anything anywhere. It doesn't shoot bullets, obviously. It's not a water gun, things like that. So you can just shoot this and the only thing coming out of the end of the barrel is salt. So this is a really fun thing. I like having this. Uh, I think I saw this on Reddit and instantly I'm just like, I need this in my life. And having had it in my life for a little while now, I absolutely love it. And um, the shots are really powerful. You got a little sight down the middle and you fill it up with salt once, it will last forever. So pretty cool little thing. So we're almost in the home stretch. We're starting to move into the slightly more expensive portion of this list. We're, you know, somewhere around 45 to $50 and up at this point. And my choice for this price point is a good set of screwdrivers. You've seen these guys in pretty much um, all of my videos where I use a screwdriver. These are the Philo Ergonic series. They have a really squishy inside core. They have a shank that runs through the majority of it. And then you have this nice plastic cap at the end. The thing I like about these is they feel fantastic in your hand. I really don't like just the molded plastic handles. I like something that's a little bit more squishy, a little bit more forming to your hand so that when you're really tightening on something, you get a nice good grip on it. Um, so that's why I like the Ergonic series by Philo. Another couple little features about these that I like is they have a um, end cap that you can actually hammer into. So you're not supposed to use screwdrivers as pry bars or chisels, but if you want, because it's what's handy, you can actually use a hammer or a mallet into the back of these to really pry into something or really get a good bite into like an old rusted out screw or something like that. It has a cap that is meant for that. In addition, it also has a hex down here, so you can attach a wrench. If you really wanna get some extra leverage, you have that portion of it right there. And also the hook on here, or the um, hole that runs through here can be used to hook these onto a pegboard or you can actually put another screwdriver through it to get more leverage. So they have like a lot of um, cool little features. The other nice thing that I like about these is the tips are very nicely precision ground. If you've never used a really high-end uh, screwdriver, it mates very differently with a screw. If you get a nice screw and you put it into this, it really should hold and stay on there because it has a finely ground tip. And they also have this um, black coating on there for wear. I've just really liked using these and I've had these for several years now. And I mean, I have beat these up pretty good and they have held up. So I really feel confident recommending these. I've had a lot of different types of screwdrivers and you notice I recommended the Philo screwdrivers over here. They're um, kind of my favorite screwdriver brand. They have a lot of different sizes, a lot of different configurations. And the kit that I have down below is a really good starter set that you can then kind of fill out and get more pieces. There are more expensive screwdrivers out there for sure, but I really like these for the, uh, I guess the uh, level of quality. You can get more expensive and you can also get a lot cheaper, but I feel like these hit a very good price point. So in this video, I've covered a lot of the basic common hand tools that you would see out in a workshop. I've got the screwdrivers, precision screwdrivers, flush cutters, Allen keys, X-Acto knives, tweezers. The only thing really missing from this list is a nice high quality set of pliers. Now, as I said in the very beginning of this video, I'm not just trying to sell you stuff. This is all stuff that I own and I use on a daily basis. And this is my daily drivers for my little small precision pliers. This is a set of gear wrench pliers. These are $60 for the set of five. Now, this might seem expensive when you compare it to, you know, like the $10 set you would get at Harbor Freight or like the $30 set you would get from Craftsman. 
But believe me, there is a pretty big difference between those and something like this. Now, for frame of reference, I also have a set of these Excel pliers that were given to me from a vendor um, way back in the day. And these Excel are about $60 to $70 each. So this set of pliers right here is about $65 at retail. So it is more expensive than this whole set. This is like the top end premium. This is kind of more of the moderate range. I personally think this makes a nice gift because $60 isn't crazy expensive, but this is a lifetime tool that will last you your whole life and they're an absolute joy to use. Like the um, Hakos I had over here in the very beginning, they have a nice spring mechanism. It's not overly weak, it's also overly strong, and it also has a nice comfort grip. They feel really nice in your hand, and this particular kit has a nice assortment of everything from like um, the long, uh, needle nose down to a shorter needle nose down to like a flat plier. You've got the side cutter and the diagonal cutter. The other nice thing about these is the jaws actually line up. If you've ever used a cheaper Harbor Freight or something like that, the jaws don't always line up. Like on the um, needle nose, you know, there's a big gap at the bottom or a big gap at the top and really only a very small portion of the um, plier section is actually useful because they may line up like that, something, you know, to that effect. But anyway, that is just a difference between a high quality tool and a low quality tool. And I think these are worth every dollar of the $60 that they sell for. So if you're looking for a high end set of precision pliers, I would definitely recommend the gear wrenches. The last item or items I have on my list are a high quality soldering station. In front of me, I've got my two Hakos. I've got the 926 and I've got my FX. 951. This is my daily driver. This is what I use every day. This was my old one, um, but it's been kind of retired to secondary usage. I've personally had my loving little 926 for 13 years now. So this was my go-to iron up until pretty recently when I got the 951. This one I bought used off of Craigslist for like $40 13 years ago, and this had seen about five to 10 years worth of production use. Um, there was a business that was closing down and they were getting rid of all their soldering equipment. So this one saw probably five to 10 years of life before it got to me. I've used it for another 13 and it has just been an absolute workhorse. The one that I'm recommending for this video is basically the newer version to this, which is the FX888D. It is a fantastic iron. It will last you forever and it will take the chore out of soldering. If you're using one of the cheap little handhelds that plug into the wall or, you know, really inexpensive Chinese knockoff or something like that, and you don't like soldering, that might be part of the reason. Using something like this makes soldering just a lot easier, more intuitive, and it just seems to work the way that you want it to work or the way you see professionals doing it. Getting a nice, high quality soldering iron will really make you not avoid soldering. I see a lot of people that are beginners and they want to avoid soldering because they hate doing it. Get a good soldering station that will change. I do have the 951 as a recommendation as well. I don't really recommend this for beginners because a very high priced iron. I think this is somewhere around $300 and I've used Metcals and some of the higher end ones. I still prefer my 951. It's just kind of a personal preference. I really like Hakko. If you are looking at an iron in this price range, this adds a couple little features like it has a um, auto detect sleep mode in the cradle. So when you go ahead and put in your tip, it will automatically go into sleep mode. I've accidentally left this thing on for the whole weekend before. I get done with a project on a Sunday and I just leave and it's on the whole week and it's just in a sleep mode. So it's kind of a nice little safety feature. And it also has these really quick change tips that you can just pop them in and out. So switching between different tips is just like a few seconds. Once again, I don't really recommend this for beginners, but if you are looking for a Cadillac siring station, this thing is amazing. I've used this next to the 888 Functionally, they're very similar. This one is just kind of more polished, more refined, and it just kind of feels better. Um, the handle and the wand is just nicer, things like that. But my go-to for a beginner soldering station that you want a really good one that's built to last is the FX888D. You will not regret it. It's worth every penny. So there you have it. This was my very first ever holiday gift guide for the practical maker or hobbyist. Hopefully there's some interesting things in here that you weren't 
readily aware of. Go ahead and send this list to everyone you know, anyone that's going to be buying you presents for the holiday season. You can go ahead and share this out and hopefully give them some good ideas. As I mentioned previously, the links down below are affiliate links. If you use those links and make purchases with them, I will get a very small commission for that to help support my channel and my tool obsession. If you don't want to use those links, just go to Amazon on your own and type in the product and I will get nothing for it and you don't have to feel bad that I'm profiting off of you somehow. So anyway, thanks for watching. Go ahead and check out my Facebook page for any channel updates and I'll see you next time.